So today we're going to talk about the seven things I wished I knew when I began dating after my divorce. And I want to be fully transparent that this title came to me uh, after noticing it on Matthew Hussey's page. And I believe he was sharing his experiences that he wished he knew before he actually got married or his dating practice before he, and he recently got married. And I thought to myself, well, I wished I knew a lot of things today or then versus now. And while I'm not in a relationship, I am proud to say that I finally believe I am in one of the best relationships in my life. And that is the relationship I have with myself. And yet if we could go back in time 15 plus years ago, there are some things I think I might have appreciated knowing <laughs> And actually, I'm talking about I wished I knew them versus it was just advice given to me. You see, the thing is, I don't believe back then, 15 plus years ago, I would have listened to the advice I'm about to share with everyone. And yet at the same time, I wished I embodied what I'm about to share. You see, here's the challenge with advice. Oftentimes, we're not ready to receive it until we're ready to receive it. Can you relate to that? You know, it, it appears to me that we learn through our life experiences, and I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for what I'm about to share in these experiences. You see, I grew up very much in fantasy. I grew up right, I, my, my, I was uh, 18 years old, uh, give or take, um, or not 18, I was a bit younger, when the TV show Heart to Heart came on. Does anyone remember that show? I was a big fan of that show. And that show actually created somewhat of the blueprint I thought what love was going to be like because I so adored the relationship between Stephanie Powers and Robert Wagner, Jonathan and Jennifer Hart, hence the name Jonathan for me. Um, actually, my birth and given name is Turkish. Uh, it's John or John. And I formalized it at age 18 to Jonathan and partly because of the TV show. I was such a big fan. And what what, what was so romantic to me about that show was you, you didn't really see any of the problems they had. They genuinely mutually invested and loved on each other. And to some degree, that created some of my challenges as an adult. And certainly many of you know my backstory. I got married in my late 20s, got divorced in, at age 40, and began this journey of where I'm at today, including a lot of personal hardship. Uh, not only did I lose my high-end corporate job, I lost all my money in the market crash of 2008, 2009, and I had to rebuild my life. And then I lost my 19-year-old son, Connor. There's a picture of him right there with his brother, Colin. And certainly I've had a lot of emotional ups and downs in the last 15 plus years. And why I'm bringing this to your attention is because we all have had some emotional ups and downs, particularly for those of us who are divorced. See, divorce is the unraveling of the tapestry of a life we had with another human being. And usually in the unraveling, there is in many cases some contention that happens. I would venture to say 75 to 80% of those who get divorced in their 40s, 50s, and 60s most likely have a contentious divorce. And in that experience can be very traumatic. And you see, what I did after my divorce, I immediately put myself out there on something called online dating. Um, actually, online dating was relatively new when I began dating 15 plus years ago. And it was so new, it was the Wild West. And I just thought you could simply punch in exactly what you want and someone would magically appear. And actually they did. I had one date after another, after another, after another, I after another, I would think, oh, you know, I, I recognize after a bunch of great first dates that didn't go anywhere, the common denominator was me. I was the common denominator of the issues that I brought into my dating experiences. So the first thing I wished I knew is doing inner work, doing inner work, personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. It's actually one of the reasons why I eventually wrote my uh, second book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book in the Jonathan Recommends section. 
I wished in the early stages after my divorce, I embodied inner work, introspection work, recognizing that I had was raised with I was raised with quite a few childhood traumas growing up. In fact, one of my traumas was um, was um, abandonment that happened. Um, along with my mother was stonewalling. My my mother did the best she could, but my mother and father um, had really poor parenting skills, and that translated to um, I I had separation anxiety growing up. I had a lot of beliefs that were bestilled, instilled upon me that was really, to some degree, toxic. And I had two loving parents. I wasn't emotionally abused. I wasn't physically abused. I had a normal childhood, especially growing. And, and I had a childhood where I grew up with foreign parents in a predominantly Anglo-Saxon area that I lived in. So all of this created childhood wounds and adult traumas. And what I did after divorce was just literally go, I'll meet the right girl and everything would be fine. I'd meet the right woman, everything would be fine. If I met the right woman, everything would be fine. And it took me, dec it took me over a decade to realize inner work was the most important facet for being in a position to attract juicy, delicious, healthy, happy love. Number two. There's a big difference between wanting to go all in versus capable of being go going all in. And what I mean to say is I remember uh, I met a woman uh, about five months after my, I didn't actually meet her. I met her online after my, I, by the way, it took from the moment we separated till my divorce, it took two years. But and I, I had this woman write me on a dating app and she said, how long have you been divorced? I said, I've been separated five months. And she said, why don't you reach out to me when you've been divorced for two years and you've had at least one to two transition relationships? I said, no, no, I'm ready for a relationship. I'm ready for a relationship. I'm ready for a relationship. And sure enough, three or four months later, I met a woman and um, we began dating and three months into the relationship, I said, I'm not ready for all in. So there's a difference between wanting a relationship versus being capable of being in a relationship. And even though I ended that relationship, I still was, I still operated. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. That inner work wasn't complete. And, and again, I, I, I recognize that now there's a big difference between wanting to go all in or wanting a relationship, let's just say, versus being capable of going all in. And all in means you, like for better, for worse, sickness and health, kind of the death do you part. That's what all in is. That's all in is wiping the vomit off of your partner's face when they're going through chemotherapy. That's all in. And it took me over a decade, a decade to be in that position, to be all in. And I didn't know that at that time. And because of that, I operated a bit disingenuously. And I'll talk about that in a moment, uh, in a moment as well. Number three, there's no rush. There's no rush to finding a, an ideal partner. You know, I was in such a rush. And I thought every single person I went on a date with could potentially be the one. Now, I like to go in with that optimism that somebody could be the one. And that, and I, and I really, and to that extent, I would oftentimes get overexcited on a date because I operated from that place and I really didn't understand discernment, pre-qualifying a person. You know, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you and the links below as well. What I've learned in what I had to learn through those experiences is what I now teach as a coach, and that is discernment. You see, when you're in a rush, you're not in a place of discernment. It's going to happen when it happens. And every experience is preparing you. 
Now, some people judge me for where I'm at right now. Some people criticize me. Well, Jonathan, how can you be a coach if you're not in a relationship? Well, I don't believe you have to. I, I kind of operate from the premise of, you know, I think a surgeon is a better surgeon if they've been through can a cancer surgeon is a better surgeon if they've been through cancer. And through some degree, my experiences mirrors what so many people experience out there. So just because there are certain coaches out there that have gotten married and I have a great deal of respect for many of them, a lot of them I don't have respect for. So, um, but that's my judgment anyway. But certainly just because a person is married or not does not make them any more qualified. Certainly they, they know their individual experience. Personally, I have over 20,000 hours of coaching accumulated at this point in my life, and I have over 3,000 hours of personal development workshops, videos, trainings I've been through. And I don't say that to impress you. I just want to impress upon you that it's the experience, the journey that makes a human being qualified to be able to share from that place of knowledge and or wisdom. So, I want to repeat, number three is there's no rush, and I'm sharing that with every one of you. When you're in a rush, oftentimes you turn green red flags into green flags. I certainly am guilty of that. Oh, my gosh. And I, oftentimes I recognize we human beings can gaslight ourselves. Okay, number four, to have compassion for others. You know, I remember going out on dates and I could be sitting across from a woman and literally you could visually see every man who ever hurt her standing behind her. And oftentimes I judge that person for a variety of different reasons. And now I have a level of understanding that, you know, to some degree we're all hurting. We're all hurting on the inside. The number one emotional health issue faced with most everybody is I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. And so when I recognize that dating triggers this, this deep wound, dating and relationships trigger our deepest wounds of not feeling worthy. So now I do my best to have compassion. And I recently had a woman who criticized me. I mean, I've got many women who criticize me. And I recognize that they're just projecting from their own life. If you're not familiar with the book, um, The Four Agreements, I highly recommend reading this book because you'll come across people who project their stuff onto you. And when you read the four agreements, which basically says, be impeccable with your word, always do your best. Remember, people's opinion of you is, is a projection and don't make assumptions. Those four agreements. And when we can operate from a place of understanding that most humans are doing the best they can, I often say to women, most men are good guys. They're just bad daters and just have compassion for everyone's experience. And I wished I knew that more. I wished I embodied that more when I began dating after my divorce. And many of you are dating after a breakup, dating after a divorce. So I get that we all wish we could learn these experiences the, the, the easier way than the hard way. And that's why I'm sharing my story with you today. Number five. Actions have consequences. Actions have consequences. See, when I was dating in an unconscious space 15 plus years ago, I will now recognize that to some degree, my unconscious behavior, my, my inability to be ready for all in, created words out of my mouth that were not very accurate. Oh my God, you're the most amazing woman in my life. Oh my God, I could see a life with us together. Oh my God, you're so wonderful, so unique. You're unlike any other woman I ever dated. Let's have sex. And then all of a sudden, I would be like, why don't I like this person anymore? I wasn't aware of how powerful the physical drive, the, the excuse me, the drive for physical intimacy. It's, it's kind of like when a shark's eyes roll back behind its head. You know, when we're in that feed, when a shark is in a feeding frenzy, it's the same for the biological um, 
drive for physical intimacy, the minute the, the pheromones and the hormones and the testosterone and all of those, that chemical cocktail, quite frankly, I mean, I, I'm going to be candid with you. I am not proud of my disingenuous behavior in those early stages of dating after my divorce. And certainly I'd like to think I was being honest with everybody, but if I'm being honest with myself, I was a bit disingenuous. Now, is that a woman's responsibility? Buyer beware. In other words, you know, words, 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 words. If you love me, show me. Another thing, another thing is I, I, I'm going to say love bombing oftentimes is a biologically driven experience for men. I don't believe we're doing it in a disingenuous way. And yet at the same time, you know, let's just be real. You don't know somebody until you know someone. And I'm just here to say that I wished I was more aware that my actions had consequences. And to some degree, that's my karma. You know, I, I think maybe the reason why, maybe the reason why I'm still single is that's my karma. My karma is here to be an educator through all of my poor choices and my bad experiences. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of being deservant of love, but I certainly do appreciate everyone's opportunity to pursue love. That's just my opinion on that. So number six, the original blueprint I had growing up was wrong. Okay. I was raised with the belief of Go to college, get a job, meet a girl, get married, buy a house, start a family. That blueprint meant absolute relationship success. Boy, was I in a world of, 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 of shock. <laughs> See, because the original blueprint also meant chemistry equals relationship success. And I I dated for years operating. If we have chemistry, it would be successful. If we have chemistry, if it would be successful. It took me years to realize that relationship success requires, it requires, certainly it requires a bit of chemistry, but most importantly, it requires um, intentionality. It requires introspective work. It requires better communication skills. And so this fantasy, both the blueprint I grew up with and also the fantasy that chemistry equals relationship success is false. Relationship success includes chemistry. It also includes shared values, lifestyles that are blendable, and most importantly, emotional maturity. In fact, we even have a chart on that. It's called the relationship iceberg chart. So just take a look at that real quick. Chemistry is above the waterline, but compatibility is shared values, blendable lifestyle, emotional maturity, and that shared vision, which is part of values or lifestyle. And number seven, the numbers game, numbers game date form of dating is exhausting. Folks, now, because of swipe apps, because of dating apps, it is now an absolute numbers game and it is completely exhausting. This is why I'm such a big advocate of discernment to actually pre-qualify a person before you ever physically meet them. I would have saved myself hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of first dates. And I'm saying that a little tongue in cheek, but it feels like I've gone on a thousand first dates since my divorce. And I could have saved myself a boatload of money because men are expected to pay on first dates. I would have saved myself a boatload of money of asking some better questions early on, hence why I teach discernment in my coaching. So check out the link below. Um, and now, you know, in the last few years, I've only had one first date, mind you, it, it, it ended, the relationship ended, but you know what? I'm being incredibly selective because the numbers game way is exhausting. And I'm here to encourage being very specific instead of, you just never know. Jonathan, you just never know. We'll go against our better judgment because we just never know. <laughs> you, when you know, stick to it. 
That's my advice and I'm sticking to it. All right. Those are the seven things I wished I knew uh, after my began dating after my divorce. Maybe you might have a few things to add. So post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell as well. And I'm going to wrap up this video. Oh, also, if you want to connect with me directly, check out the links below to schedule a discovery call, to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, to follow me on Instagram, to get all the books I recommend. It's listed below. And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.